So far we've moved data within a data stream using the shuffle node and then we've moved the data between different data streams using the copy node. However, so far we've been using existing predefined layers and channels to do this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at how we can create our own layers and channels. You can see that I've got a, a script open here which is pretty much where we left off at the end of the last tutorial. Uh, you can see that I've got the viewer set to the RGBA uh, layer and the RGBA channels are visible. So this is where we left off, with where we were creating this single data stream and we were populating it with, um, with, with data from other uh, layers. The difference is, is that I've brought in a couple more layers which, um, which if we just come into a little bit more, you can see I've got a single channel layer called Zing. You can see it's just it's just got data populated into the red channel. And then I've got this four channel uh, image called Foo. And we'll take a look at these as we go on. So what we're going to start by doing is creating custom layers, uh, creating channels within those layers, and then shuffling the data from the RGBA side, because obviously these are read nodes, so the data automatically comes in on the RGBA side. So we're going to be shuffling that into the custom channels that we create and then we'll use the copy node to merge them into this single data stream so that we can access it all from a single path and a single viewer. So I'll make a start. The first thing that I'll do is just connect my viewer to this single channel image and we can see what it looks like here. Um, it's a single channel image so if we just take a look at it there's the data in the red, nothing in the green, nothing in the blue and nothing in the alpha. I'm just using the R, G, B and A keyboard shortcuts um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the main keyboard. Providing your cursor is over the uh, display area, then you can do that. And again, uh, you click again and you get back to the R, G, B channels. So we're going to start by creating a new custom layer for this called Zing. And then we'll populate the layer by moving the data into it using the shuffle node. So how do we create our own custom layer? Well, it's very, very simple. All we do is we come to our our layers and so far we've been looking at the layers and we've been coming into the other layers for the ones that are there but not populated but we've got this additional thing down here called new and what we can do is we can click on this and it brings up this dialog and this is where we define a layer so in this case we're going to call it zing and we know that this layer just has a single channel in it so we will we will just call that zing as well so once we've done that we can say okay and now you'll see that uh, new automatically defaults to that uh, to that particular channel and uh, and essentially this is um, this is kind of nuke's way of reminding you that you need to populate this with data so we're kind of seeing nothing at the moment so i'm just going to quickly flick in fact i'll leave it in the zinc and we'll actually do that now so we've done this before we just select this and then we'll select the shuffle node we've defined we've defined our layer and we've defined a channel within that layer but what we what we haven't done yet is actually populate it so that's what we're doing now so we're just going to take the the RGBA stream as it comes in and then we're going to map it across to our layer called Zing which is just off the screen capture but there it is and this is an entirely predictable result we've seen this before when we worked with the Z, uh, the depth pass before it basically shuts all this down apart from the one channel that it finds so it reads down until it finds that channel then it reads across and it populates it into the area that you want it to go into which in this case is this single channel in the Zing layer. Okay so we'll do the same thing with this Foo layer. Now we can already see if I just come in a little bit closer we can already see that this layer is a completely different animal. This layer has actually got four channels. If we just come back to our RGBA so we can see it you can see there that this layer called Foo has got data in the red channel you see it's got the letter A in the red channel it's got the letter G uh, sorry the letter B in the in the green channel it's got the letter C in the blue channel and it's got the letter D in the alpha channel so we can see that all four channels of this uh, of this image are populated it's an arbitrary graphic uh, but this could be um, you know this this could be for example four separate roto shapes for example holdout mats that have all been put together into one TIFF file so it could be something that's very practical for a compositing purposes I've created it in this way with the A, B, C and D as reference so that it's, it's self-describing and it kind of helps you to understand where the data is going as we start to move it around 
so we're going to repeat the same process that we did before we're going to create a new channel so I'll just come out of that a little bit into here go down to the new and in this case we're creating a new channel called foo and in this we're going to populate it with a B now notice what happens there when I press B nukes trying to help me out it recognizes that there is a, a default predefined channel called back with you and it thinks I might need that but I don't so I'll just delete that away C and D again it's it's identifying the predef predefined depth Z channel there which again I don't want so my full layer is basically populated with a channel called A B C and D so I'm gonna accept that and again you can see that the uh, that nuke has, has defaulted the display to this new channel that I've created and again it does that as a way of kind of prompting you to uh, to start to populate it with data because at the moment it's dormant so for example if we were to go if we were to go back to the RGBA and then we will go to look for the foo you can see it's not there it's there in the other channels because it's created but it isn't populated as soon as it's populated it'll jump over onto the left side so that's what we'll do now so we'll select our foo read node I'll just change this to one channel so that we uh, so that we and then clear it so that we can see the this 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 shuffle rather than that one so again I'm going to select that and I'm going to choose the shuffle node and here's the shuffle and again we've done this before it's reading the it's reading the 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 red green blue and alpha channel from the RGBA side but at the moment it's passing it out as red green blue and alpha onto the as, as an output on the RGBA side as well which is no use to us so what we want to do is that we want to change this and we want to tell it to define our foo layer now this is more like it we can see now that it's taking the red channel from the RGBA and it's passing it out on the A channel of foo it's taking the green data passing out on the B channel the C the, the blue is going out on the C channel and the alpha is going out on the D so this is exactly what we expect to see and just to demonstrate that if we come now we can see that foo is now in our list and if we click on it now we can see if we go through the channels that's the red channel we see the A that's the green channel we see the B that's the blue channel we see the D and that's the alpha channel we see the D so there we go so the so we know now that our layer is populated correctly so I'll set this back to RGBA and we will move on and, and also to the RGB so so we now and we will now connect back to our our composite data stream ready for the next next step which is to actually bring these two these these two uh, layers with their image data in the channels and actually add them to our composite uh, our, our composite data stream on this left hand side so again to do this we would use the copy node so I'm just going to start with the zing layer it's a single channel so I'll type K to bring up a copy node and then just drag this in and let it feed into the B side again we we see the error we, we 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 expect that error now because we know that this doesn't have an alpha channel but we know that this copy node is expecting to transfer an alpha channel from this side in on the A side and pass it into the RGBA on the B side and clearly that's not what we want it to do we want to be passing the the zing channel from the zing layer so we're going to come down and pick that from the A side and we want to be passing that into the Zing channel of the Zing layer on the B side so now we've done that again remember that we're not actually looking at this data stream now we're looking at the composite we should be able to go here now and find our Zing and again we can see the Zing information there we go into the red channel we see it and obviously the green channel the blue channel and the alpha channel we see nothing because those channels those channels don't exist there's only one channel in this particular layer so we'll go back to RGBA and we'll now take a look at this full layer and we'll look at it and I mentioned uh, looking at this in a slightly more shorthand way so again we will pick our we'll type K to bring up our copy and again we'll feed this in we're getting a little bit tight on space now feed this into the uh, to the composite this is where it gets a bit tricky because of the uh, because of the, the limited space so I'll just jiggle these around a little bit until we've got some kind of coherence and just up that back up so here we are so we now need to take a look at this copy node 
Now the first thing that's that's apparent is that we didn't get the nag message, we didn't get the error. So why is this? Essentially this is because previously there's been no data in the alpha channel and because by default the copy node copies RGBA to RGBA it needs the alpha channel to input. But in this case this particular stream we know that this is a four channel image, we know that the channels are called A, B, C and D but nevertheless Nuke recognizes that there is an alpha channel in this in this image. Don't forget at this stage it's coming in on the RGBA channel. It hasn't been actually passed on to our layer yet so so this is what happens in here. So at the moment it's passing the RGBA data from the A side into the RGBA data on the other side. So there's no errors but don't be fooled into thinking that all is well because uh, because of that. If we actually come into our composite that we're looking at now down this stream and we look for our foo, we can see that it's not there. If we go into there, we can see it, but when we choose it, it's not populated. None of, there's the red, there's the green, there's the blue, there's the alpha. So the layer exists, we can see it, and we know that that layer has channels, but they're not yet in this data stream. We need to, do, we need to make changes to the copy node to do that. So this is where I said I would mention a short hand. We certainly don't want to be copying the RGBA into the into the RGBA. So we'll uncheck that. What we actually be wanting to be doing is we need to be passing the RGB red into the D channel or, or sorry the A channel of the, um, of the of the full layer and then the green channel into the uh, B channel of the full layer. But of course that's, that's tedious, we can do it a quicker way than that. We have this option down here called Layer Copy and what this does is this allows us to basically copy every channel from the layer in one click, which we do like that. We automatically see that this is now, this is now presenting itself to us. We can see now that, that, that it basically take, takes no regard of those four fields now. It's basically populating the old layer. So I could have used this on the, on the forward layer that I used earlier on. Uh, it would have only been populating two channels, but it would still have done it and it would have ignored the, the blue and the alpha that were not populated. So what's going on now? I can set that to none. It really doesn't matter because it's not using any of those four fields. It's basically bringing in any channels that are active. You can see them check there, A, B, C and D. It's bringing them in and it's copying them over. And we can see now that our full layer is now properly populated. And if we come onto the red side, we can see in the red channel that there's the A. We can see that in the green channel there's the B. In the blue channel there's the C. And in the alpha channel that there's the D. So it's entirely predictable now. But we're seeing the whole lot down this data stream. This, is now, this data stream here has now got everything. This has now got all our data. So we can get at our full data, we can get at our forward data and again we can see forward U and forward V that are occupying the red and green channels. We can go to our depth and again we can see that there's data in the red channel. Obviously we know that there's nothing in any of the others but we know that there's data there. So and again the RGBA we can see the red, green, blue and alpha channels of the RGBA layer.